President Biden will deliver a speech later today in Pennsylvania near the historic Revolutionary War site of Valley Forge. Now, this event comes just as tomorrow marks three years since the January 6 assault on the U.S. Capitol. Supporters of then-President Donald Trump stormed the building during the certification process for President Biden's victory. The incident sparked the largest criminal investigation in American history. The Justice Department will hold all January 6 perpetrators at any level accountable under the law, whether they were present that day or were otherwise criminally responsible for the assault on our democracy. CBS News election law contributor David Becker joins us now. Uh, David, it, it's great to have you with us uh, on this day in particular as we think about what happened uh, nearly three years ago. Give us a sense of what actions Congress has taken since then to better protect the election process. Yes, we all remember, I hope we all remember, where we were the afternoon of January 6th as a violent attack took place on, the, on and inside the Capitol, and how we heard from members of both parties about the fear they had, uh, the, the sorrow they had for the people that died that day. Congress did act. It acted last year and enacted something called the Electoral Count Reform Act. And what that was designed to do was to strengthen the guardrails around that electoral count, make very clear that that act of Congress on, uh, on January 6th is just a ministerial act. They are just counting the ballots that have already been certified and verified and presented to the National Archives. Um, it further re uh, requires that larger numbers of both houses um, uh, object if they want to go into deliberations about any of those electoral votes, 20 percent of each house rather than one member of each. And it also limits the grounds for objections, clearly indicating that that event on January 6th, regardless of what's happening, is just a ministerial act confirming an election that we already know the results of. David, as you're talking about remembering both parties condemning those attacks, there's also been a shift we've seen in how uh, in how some of those Republican lawmakers in particular who spoke out against it now recall January 6th, three years ago. How has Americans' attitude, the public, changed about the insurrection? Well, we've gotten some recent polling on that, and it indicates particularly amongst Republican voters there is some erosion of outrage about what happened, that there has been some rewriting of history to some degree, that uh, January 6th was just a tourist expedition gone wrong, when in reality, we remember what actually happened. There were armed individuals who were sent to the Capitol and who attacked the Capitol, who attacked Capitol police officers, who put members of Congress at risk, that Kevin McCarthy called the White House, urgently asking for help, for the White House to do anything, that other members of Congress stood up that day, both Democrats and Republicans, just in, in outrage and uh, on something that we had not seen happen since the Civil War before. I mean, it was a remarkable day. And to see now that people are somewhat forgetting that as we move farther away from that date, that that's, this is something we can never see happen again is a little disturbing. But good news is still there are strong majorities who remember the uh, incidents of January 6th and the horrors of that day. Uh, David, more broadly, I mean, you talk about sort of this erosion of outrage, as you called it. Um, I'm wondering how Americans' overall attitudes when it comes to political violence have shifted since January 6th. I mean, it was just last month that Lana and I were sitting here um, as the decision by a jury to award $148 million in damages um, in a defamation case against uh, former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani when that decision was reached. And uh, that trial, as you know, really um, laid bare some of the absolute um, terrifying, there's no other way to say it, threats um, that election workers, citizens who are performing their, their, their public service, um, carrying out these kinds of uh, election responsibilities, the threats that they have faced. So what have we seen with respect to how Americans view political violence? We do see in the past several years that there has been an acceptance that political violence 
might be necessary in some way. This is really counter to the American values we were all raised with, that we settle our differences at the ballot box. And if we happen to lose an election, we then gear up for the next campaign and try to win the next one. That is really in the best American tradition. We've seen that die down to some degree. And there are a percentage, not a majority by any means, but a percentage of Americans who believe that political violence might be necessary under certain circumstances. Just this week, we've seen bomb threats phoned into several state capitals, both in blue states and red states all around the country. And as you mentioned, Elaine, there is there have been election officials all around the country, people that I work with on a daily basis, Republicans and Democrats, who have experienced nonstop abuse, harassment, and threats in the more than three years after the election. Hopefully, we'll restore our values that we've had in the past where we disagree, but we do it civilly, and we, de we decide who ultimately wins at the ballot box, not at the sharp end of a sword. Uh, just before we let you go, David, then based on the conversations that you're having with some of these election workers, as you point out, Republicans and Democrats alike in this current climate, um, what fortifies them? What allows them to continue carrying out this public service? Honestly, I have to tell you, they fortify me, and I hope other Americans mostly. I see these people, these are these are civil servants. They don't get paid a lot of money. They don't do this for fame. They serve a crucial role that prior to 2020 or 2016, nobody really understood much about. And they have been just enduring this abuse and harassment nonstop, and they keep doing their jobs. And if you look at the 2023 and 2022 and 2021 and the 2020 election, where they successfully managed the highest turnout in American history in the middle of a global pandemic, and their work withstood all of the scrutiny in dozens of courts and all of the harassment that's followed, it is one of the great moments of American history that we pulled that off as a society and we have these civil servants to thank for it. And somehow they keep pulling through and they're going to pull through again in 2024. David Becker. David, again, so good to have you with us. Thank you. Thank you.